<laughs> we talk about like semi dong, semi dong. Hold on, um, Dakoni Cobalts. Remember these? No one fucking bought them. It angers me so. So uh, yeah, uh, these made by uh, Dylan Delani, as I call him, of Dakoni fame. They're not high five minutes. Completely different setup, and very hard to drive properly. So they're actually a perfect headphone to bring out to test my dong on. Or, well, no, semi-dong. You see this one, the Yuki. We've got three things here because we've got to combine reviews. The Yuki, 170 bucks, own, fucking window. This is the only true dong. The true dong because it only works plugged in. These other two, these other two are faking it because the Shandling uh, Up 4 and the Muse M4 while we'll work plugged in like we have right here with this DD Hi-Fi cable, are actually Bluetooth. So BTR7 competitors, or IFI Griffin competitors, depending on how you want to look at it, but I'm gonna, all right, so I'm gonna do them in some weird order. I don't know, Zeus is gonna hate me in the future because he's gonna have to figure out how to do fucking con uh, condoms. How to do chapter marks. I don't know where my brain is. Start with the Shanling. Just because it was, it's been here the longest. It's been sitting on the to-do table for like six months. By the way, James Horner and the Rocketeer, perfect movie. Mr. Robot, Risky Business. Apparently, they have a twenty-nine and a half minute song. That's just a compilation, and it sounds like a Shandling product. It is the nicest compliment you can give fucking anything, and yet somehow. This little unit, this up four, which currently costs ninety nine dollars, it is the cheapest of the bunch. Where are we ninety nine? We're it's eighty four on Amazon. Everything will have Amazon and Hi Fi Go links because apparently all these things are available on both. Eighty four on Amazon for the twenty twenty two version. That's how old it is. And then ninety nine on Hi Fi Go. And then we've got the Muse one twenty nine on Amazon. 129 on Hi-Fego, and then the Own 169. So the Pure Dong costs the most. It's also the newest, and uh, on Hi-Fego it's also 169. We can look at all the pretty pictures. What am I listening to? I am into this. Oh, it's just this is some shopping music. Also for the testing, because I gotta I gotta vary it up. I got a custom one of a kind set of white cost KPH 40s on a Heart Audio cable. We're going to make the, the description fucking wild. It's going to be all links. So Heart Audio actually makes a direct plug-in for the Koss that turned it into a balanced headphone. Just You don't have to do anything. Just boom, it's wired properly for these particular headphones. 4.4. So that'll be a test rig. Uh, we're not going to look at the tungsten. Leave the, ignore those. Those are just there for like looks at the moment because I have the double-sided on the other end of the basement. And also, <clears throat> Harmonic Dine Zeus Elite being run off of my... Purple Asylum IAM cable using just some 3.5 adapters. Yeah, I'll see if you can link these adapters. It's been a hot minute since I've linked these, but it lets you turn any two pin into, you actually get these for two pin or MMCX. If you have any nice MMCX cables. So I can do that and then use my Purple Asylum cable uh, more than I would normally because now I could use it for headphones that take 3.5 millimeter. So, oh, and the DD Hi-Fi cable on the Cobalt because the Cobalt cable wasn't exactly the nicest cable, because hi fi -man? Um, But holy fuck, that's brass. This is the BC-150B. I just, as much as I hate those names, man, does DD Hi-Fi pull the fuck off. Oh, we should probably talk about the Up4. So you have to turn it on to get it to work in this orientation, which is why it's blinking red and blue. So you have to turn it on, and it puts it into a Bluetooth pairing mode permanently, I think it'll stop eventually after like five or six minutes. But it's constantly trying to connect, even though I'm literally playing music as we speak over it. Sound quality, it's it's got that smooth creaminess, it's got that shandling fucking dap. Just for a hundred dollars, you cannot you will not be upset at a hundred dollars. Until I start talking about these other things, then you'll be just okay. 2.5 millimeter. I'm using an adapter. I'm using an ICO adapter, actually, from an from the OH9. I never never sold this one. I sold the OH9s because it was in a drawer. 
So I'm never going to sell these IMs than I did. But yeah, thank God I didn't sell it because I need, I need a way to get 4.4. That's So even though this is a an old version, 2022 is not old enough that you could be excused for using 2.5. That said, this Muse also has 2.5. But then it also has 4.4 and 3.5, so we're gonna get to this and the fucking glory that that is. All right, I'm gonna unplug it, just so you can look at it. Best cables. Comes out of the little plastic clip. The clip is just, a, it's not spring loader or anything, it's just bent plastic, so this will probably break in about, I'm gonna give it three months. If you use it every day, three, two to three months before this just gets, like you put it on something a little bit too thick and then she snaps. It looks pretty cheap, though. I'm not sure if Shandling sells it separately. I like the shape of the unit. I like the size of the unit. This is a good size for a Bluetooth unit. It's not too big. It's not too small. You get your 3.5 out, your 2.5 out. You have a microphone there, and you have a mode switch that goes between low and high gain. Um, the low and high gain is very, very subtle, though. Like, I had it on the Koss, and the Koss were like... Uh -huh. I almost couldn't tell. I was hitting the mode switch. I'm like, is this not working? But that is their low and high gain. It's just a slight thing. The USB-C on the bottom. The real selling point of this unit over other units is the knob. People love a good, good clicky fuck you knob. Ooh, and the glass on both sides. It feels good to hold. I love the smooth, rounded edges. It's good. It does its job. It connects to Bluetooth. It's got good range. It's got decent, better than decent battery life over six hours is what I really want to expect with one of these. Um, I haven't used it dead, dead ass for six hours straight. I would need like a team of people, like a Mr. Beast level team of like, hey, Cassandra, use this for the next six days. And then that's all her job is, is to use that for six days and give me a report. The 2.5 is just going to be, it's just, uh, it's just, uh. So it's just eh, like they could absolutely, it's fucking huge. How the fuck did own fit a 3.5 and a 4.4 in a smaller chassis and you guys are going with this? Some companies just take a little longer to come around. So yeah, the Shanling, I'm gonna give the Shanling like, this is where we're starting this video, by the way, coffee. This is where we're starting this video. The Shanling gets a thumbs up. It does everything I want for a hundred dollars. I would even overlook slightly the, the 2.5 catastrophe that it is. We're gonna skip from that, which which Bluetooth, by the way, it's really designed for Bluetooth. It's just more convenient to not have to repair my phone 75 times. We're gonna get to the Muse last, because we gotta talk about the Muse last. Let's go to the Yuki. Um, beautiful little case. Look, there's a waifu on it, although you can barely tell. It's like a camouflage waifu. It also looks like she's a little red. Maybe she's a demon. Something written on her arm. She might be demonic. I'm okay with this. In fact, Yuki Rito is uh, the protagonist of True Love Ruin. We all love him, don't we? This is a package, as a looks package, you cannot beat this. Even over like the, the muse is about to step up and it's like, oh, look, it's got a window. And it's like, yeah, you got a window, but you got a small window. And you got a red and white circuit board and you can see the rows because it has four individual amplification circuits for the balanced. There was, this is the most expensive one, 170. And a hundred seventy dollar dongle has to compete with Quest style stuff, the Hibby stuff, uh, the other Muse stuff, the Muse M three Mark two. I have it sold. There's piles of it shit over there. You get two buttons on it, and the unfortunate matter is that these are volume down and volume up, or volume down and volume up. I forget which one it is. One's got a dot in it. I love the the, the fucking looks cannot be beat. It feels like it's hand painted. This isn't like, oh, it's just white. No, this is metal with a matte white paint on it. And you can feel that. You can feel it. Fe it feels nice. The, the wire comes with the gold and the white and the silver. And the adapter even matches with the feel of the paint. Like, they've they've gone to the extra effort of making this nice. Own doesn't fuck around. Their S17 Pro is pretty much my favorite headphone amplifier that is just a standalone thing. And then you use it as a preamp for speakers and it's even better so i know they can deliver quality so this is their first dong i believe and they did not disappoint dong a point let's plug this in let's plug this in let's plug this in and let's plug in the purple asylum cable with the interchangeable heads which i don't believe the purple asylum has the option for 2.5 because 
I'm not bad and nothing should be on 2.5 anymore. Plug it in. Playing. Um, there are no lights in this. That's a that's a big negative. Wait till we turn the muse on. Shit lights up like a Christmas tree. This beautiful window, but there's no way to tell if it's actually actively doing anything except for music coming out of it. Actually, let me see if I unplug it. If it it doesn't detect if it's something plugged in. As a first dong, I always expect there's one or two bothering mouse pad. Very many, many colors. What is this? Quintessential quintuplets? I haven't seen it. I just know cute girls mouse pad. Some of them when you unplug it will actually disable, like the quest style. You unplug anything from it and it sits there dead. Stops drawing power from your phone, stops being an amplifier, stops being a source, your speakers come back on. This, once it's plugged in, that's it. It doesn't know anything. So you plug it back in, music is still playing. Um, the volume controls here are not the same as the volume controls here. That's louder. Yeah, the dot is louder. So we could, we could raise and lower. Now that's good. It's just good. Because usually it's a pretty coarse volume control on the phone. And then if you have the buttons that adjust the volume control on the phone, it's still coarse. So this lets you set a volume maximum, essentially, on the phone. So you want to go three quarters. And then this will let you up and down. I wish, I wish, I wish, like I was a fish in Dr. Seuss, that if you held it or double tapped it, it would next track. Because then you could just not have your screen on and control the entire unit from the phone. But you can't. Now let's talk about audio quality with the Yuki. Kills the Shanling. Kills the Shanling. Kills the VTR7. Kills a lot of things. This is... And the thing is, it only labels itself. That's weird. It only labels itself as having 160 milliwatts of power, which is nothing. But. By the way, Birdman, go watch the movie and then download the soundtrack fully legally and then be fucking amazed at it. You know what? That's something I should have played at fucking Capital Audio Fest. Damn it. There's just separation for days. There's just, it's got this quality to it that's like, oh, this is not just, I would have no idea. If you took my phone and this and locked it into a giant expensive looking box and I plugged my headphones into it and uh, someone said, would you like us to play your music selection now? And I was like, yes, please, sir, play it, hit play. And this came out of it. This is a $1,000. This is a minimum $1,000 like setup that's got this smooth class A sound to it. It's like, oh, oh yes. Mm, it sounds endlessly powerful. And it's a dongle. Actually, I just had the realization this kind of looks like a pizza with olives all over it. Get to the picture of it on the internet. It's a much better picture of it. Where's, where's my pizza with olives? Scroll faster. Snow White and Crystal Clear. Yeah, there's the uh, PCB boards. That looks like a pizza without olives. And then you get the one you come up here. Come on, god damn it. Yeah, by the way, that's DSC-256. Like, like, you're gonna read the specs. Like, if you're interested in this, my words are never, I don't wanna read specs, that's boring. I just wanna tell you how it emotionally affects my fucking music listening experience. And then you can do your own research with everything by clicking links. But, Oh, there's the there's the batteries and everything. The batteries obviously. Wait, where the hell is the battery? Because they're showing the top board, they're showing the plugs shooting down, which is why that's cut off. And they're showing all the other chips. So that's the amplification. That's obviously trans. Where the fuck does the battery? How does this thing? Oh, it doesn't have a battery. Never mind. There is no battery. That's why it's so small. It doesn't have battery. Anyway, here is the pizza. Looks like an Elio's pizza with olives. All right, zoom that out. Zoom that out. Six, five plus volts with 16 triggers to form the four-way headphone amp. Compact yet powerful. Blah, 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 blah. Dual. And this is another thing that I've seen. And this happens in the... Um... Ibasso players. Is Cirrus Logic DAX. Dual Cirrus Logic DAX. Which is just like, what? Uh, the only thing that would make me more impressed than having dual Cirrus Logic shafts, by the way... Uh, 0 
uh, total harmonic distortion. The only thing that would make it better is it had a ROM DAC like this $1,000 DAC here, but doesn't. Oh my fucking gods. Oh, Shaklat's Tales. Shamanic Tales from her art. There's absolutely no need for more power than that. Except if you want to run tungsten, then you don't have enough. So, this is probably top of the game right now with straight dongle. That's it. Own has come out of nowhere and hit us with this. Lacking a couple features, I'd like if you unplugged it. I'd love if the buttons could be double usage or add more buttons. They'll let me control next and last track and include a longer... What? You back inside? It's the most lovely November day out. And the looks, like as far as like looks, this is the this is the looker. This is the this is the looker of the bunch. But we have to talk about the best one. So now I don't have it here, and I don't think it's sitting on the pile. Let me check. If it's sitting on the pile, I'll steal it. It is. Here, we'll take a bunch of them. Give me all these fucking dongles. Give me some dong, bro. Fuck it. We'll even talk about this for a second. The Ico Zerda, the old one that did fiber optic out, and I've got a fiber optic adapter. Please, Ico, the Zerda 2 did not have a, a fiber optic. This is the most convenient thing ever for audiophiles. We've got this one, the Moon Drop. All right, this is the Moon River 2 Titanium Powerhouse, absolute murder ball. Also, window, kind of a boring window. In fact, they covered most of it with like a design. Don't know why you would do that. Don't do that. The Quest Style. Ah, uh, no buttons, no controls, high low gain switch. Again, window, LEDs inside, a lot of empty space, a lot of empty space. It feels like you could have done more with this. But my, this this was the goat until this one came out. Now, I've had an older version of this that was my that was the goat. It was a Muse M3. Then only fucking recently did the Muse M3 Mark II come out. And it's got this like beautiful fucking satin metal finish and it weighs like I could kill you with it. It feels like a river stone and it's just a dongle and it's got the volume controls here and you could hold it to go to mute or double press it to go to line out. I think that might've been the other one, but it's 4.4 and 3.5. And this has been the goat goat. Take that bigger chassis and then Bluetooth with NFC, I think does this, the Shanling have, the Shanling has NFC too. So you can just hold your phone to it to pair it. So this one, biggest one of the group, and we're not gonna wire it up because I want the buttons to work. When you use it as a wired dong, the next track, last track buttons don't work and the play pause button doesn't work, which is kind of annoying. So instead we're going to turn it on, we're gonna hold this button and we're gonna be blinded by, by science. You get your flashing lights there. Let me make sure my, my Bluetooth is actually on because it's going to connect to the own flamingo upstairs which by the way own flamingo zeos link the own flamingo because i'm using it as my the preamp and dac for f fucking five thousand dollar triangle speakers and it's glorious we are now connected we are now connected yes yes i think yes two devices let me go into that oh no i turned it off you know android did you make it so when I push Bluetooth, it just brings me to the menu instead of turns it on and off. Now I gotta hold. What's the other one it's trying to connect to? Nothing. 70% battery on the Muse Hi-Fi. Now that's blinking to indicate we are connected with Bluetooth. That'll never stop blinking. Now up here we have two blue indicators. And these blue indicators, I don't know why there's two of them, but it's nice for balance. And they will indicate high and low gain. Nothing in this world is perfect, and some things are infuriating. So, there's a switch for high and low gain. What do you think it's labeled? High, low, H-I-L-O? No. H and L? No. R and G? Yeah! R for high and G for low. And then get this. G is blue and R is red. So you switch it up and you get those LEDs turned red to show that you're on high gain and you switch it down to G, you know, which I would think would mean green and it's blue. It doesn't matter, this one sounds the best. You're gonna fucking buy this one. 
a lot of shit going on in here and a lot of shit going on well above the halfway point, which is where the battery lives. So you actually get pretty good battery life. Not the greatest. 70% is probably after an hour and a half being used. But I was pumping like a lot of hard drive headphones through it. You get your play pause. Here, let's go up. Let's go back to FUBAR. Play pause. Playing. You get your next track. You get your last track. Real fast on that. You get your microphone, so you can make phone calls with this. And then you get your volume control, which actually doubles as it'll also mute. Which, here's my biggest problem. When you mute it, because it has a mute. So you don't have to lower it, and you don't have to pause it. You can just mute it. And we'll, we'll just, we, we did you, we did you. Let's go, yeah. Let's go this way. Because nothing scales like a fucking cos. So it's playing music, but there's no sound. You're going to come to this conclusion when you buy this, which you will buy it. Why the fuck is there a mute button that doesn't flash the LEDs to say, hey, you're muted? So now you got to hold it. Now we've unmuted it. I thought something was wrong with this unit when I first plugged it in because it sounds so different. It doesn't sound like it, it went from like, okay, clean, okay, clean, okay, very clean, smooth, just, ah. This just sounds like, this sounds like there's a tube pre inside of it. So just, just a warning, my preference for sound is sound different, but not like 2% different. Fuck that. That's peasants amounts of different. I want it to sound like you're shooting sound through a tunnel, but also I have IEMs in and noise canceling headphones on, but the sound coming through the tunnel is so loud, I can feel it. Like that's my ideal sound is like, I don't know what's happening. I want to not know what's happening and I want to enjoy it. When you come to sound, especially stuff shit that's under $200, Everything here is under $200. And under $200, it's not the be all end all of audio. It's not like, oh, we are building a $15,000 stack. You only be able to afford one of these. Then you have to sort of be concerned because then a person's investing $15,000, you fuck them up, lawsuits. When you're spending $200 on an audio product, if you can make it sound different than everything else in the space, and I mean everything else in the space, possibly including the M3, and I still enjoy it, that's when you get my money. Because I don't care how this measures. I don't care, oh, if you look at the, the graph and there's, there's, I don't care. I care that when I plug headphones into it, most headphones or IMs, I have my, um, the, these are actually one of the tuning samples of my Kinear and Nana collab. By the way, all my collabs now in an easy to find and update um, link tree in the description. And the, you don't get this one. I wanted this as the design pattern. It looks like fire. I wanted the one that looks like a fiery thing. And they were like, no. And I'm like, well, why not? And like, they were just like, no. So this is one of the tuning samples from my Kinera Nana on a $1,000 effect audio cable. So while my cable is an affordable $350, this was an unaffordable $1,000 cable, which I will be doing a review of that. But from IEMs that I know and love to headphones that I put on literally everything, the Muse just just changes things, just, just enough. It does this step back and width enhancement that I, I, I find it hard to describe. It takes a second on pause. It's like there's a set, it's, it's like the IFI soundstage, like 3D thing. Oh no. If I let this play, I will just cry. I don't know what they put in this. All right? I don't know what any of these things fucking do. They got a, a board soldered on a board. If I go to the fucking thing. Where's the thing? Give me the thing. You're not the thing. By the way, if you're seeing this on Patreon and I managed to get it out in the next two days and seven hours, there's one hour left on the 11.11 sales. There's no reviews on this. It says flagship grade portable Bluetooth. I believe you. Stable Bluetooth connectivity with Qualcomm. Qualcomm, greatest processing chips in the world. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm. End of episode one of Cyberpunk. When that thing happens with his mom, this is the song they play from the end of this episode through the credits. And once I rewatched the show and understood where that song was and got a good copy of that song, tears. On good audio equipment, tears. 
independent hi-fi architecture with a uh, Sabre uh, 9038 QM2 DAC chip. So it's got a Sabre DAC in it. Normally, Sabre DACs are like my, my go-to. Uh, AKM is back, and they have a couple really nice things going for them. And then the Cir Cirrus Logic are like in the own, and I fucking just magic. But it's doing just, just a simple Sabre DAC. I don't know what SCC intelligence switching is. No idea what that is. It does have individual charge and USB, so you can use this on like your laptop and charge it. I, you know what? I don't know if it'll charge. I think you have to charge it separately from using it, which could be good or bad. Also, you could probably run it off of a cleaner USB versus when you're charging the thing off of. Crisp and clear, high quality internal, seven digital filters. Oh, there's digital filters, which, all right, if we hit the, what is it, we hit the button here. That's pause. That's power and pause, and that did a thing. Oh, that's what you do here. So you hold that side for mute. You hold volume up for mute. If you hold down, there's a picture of an infinity. Watch. One, two, three, four, four. Five, six. We're now in the six digital filter, which translates to, hold on, um, the minimal phase fast mixing. So again, I don't care about filters. I never heard a difference in digital filters, but I've been actively switching between these trying to hear a difference. I love this unit. As much as I love the Yuki, and I love the Yuki, this just is it's that bit weirder. If you're a normal person, you want a nor you want the best dongle. Boom, Yuki's it. If you want the best Bluetooth receiver that just happens to also be a dongle, the bigger, more cumbersome and covered in fingerprints. Oh no, I changed tracks accidentally. And we'll, we'll go back to that. I can't. I I'm gonna I'm all right. I'm gonna take this off. We're gonna put the thousand dollar cable. If I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry real, real tears. Real fucking tears. Real thousand dollar collab IMs on a thousand dollar cable tears, even though the cable's not making an actual difference in the sound, I promise you. Also, if you unplug it, it doesn't pause. So we got the same issue as the own. The fact that they give you a 2.5, eh? I don't care if it's added, as long as it's a 4.4 to use. Neon lights and neon dreams. I'm literally, I can't, I can't physically stop myself from tearing up. And this also says eight hours of battery life, by the way. And a 320 milliwatt strong output power. I, I have not needed to put on high gain on anything. Me, maybe I would have to on those. <sighs> This is my go-to now. I could sell my BTR7. I could sell basically, I'll sell the Shanling. I'll probably keep the Yuki around just because, or maybe put it in the yard. So I, there's so many good things that now that I have to pick between them, it's like picking your favorite shape of Chicken McNugget from McDonald's. There's like what, five? And you know what? They all taste fucking great. But this one, this is a separate entity. This surpasses all the things that I expected a portable. I could sell the Griffin. I could s just sell the IFI Griffin, except if I need it for power. This should not be under a hundred, under a hundred and two hundred dollars. It should not be under there. Hundred and thirty is fucking silly for this. I would just tell you, don't buy any of this other shit. Desktop shit. Get a USB-C, get a USB power supply, get a USB-C for your computer, you are done. God, this sounds good. Ha ha ha. Make you see what I see. I'm having an emotional reaction because it's just fucking, it's doing things that I wouldn't expect out of a, a just an amp to do. And maybe you won't like those things. That's another thing. I have to, you know, back myself up. It's like, maybe you won't like those things. Yeah, we'll shut off the Bluetooth. It's gonna fart. No, take it 
takes over as that. We'll give it the hardest to drive ones. Boom. 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 Still low gain. So let's see if I max out the volume. And you can't hold the volume because you'll put it in mute mode. I guess I'm not strong enough. That's low gain. What the fuck? Okay, let's lower that a bunch. More of a bunch and then flip it to high gain. That is just, that's just gonna just gonna destroy the fucking headphones. You have three your options here. And honestly, I, I can't say bad things about the Shanling, except for it's got a 2.5 and it's the cheapest. So, you know, but it's also a Shanling and it's got that cream rich sound of a Shanling. If you're a, basically this comes out down to fanboyism. If you're a Shanling fanboy, you get the up four and you're happy, except you had to use a fucking adapter to run 4.4, which bothers me. If you are a looks fanboy and you just want the best of the, of these three, the Oon sounds the best. That's saying a lot coming from that fucking quest style. Saying a lot coming from the quest style. That that's the best sounding one. And even though I would probably have taken this over these, that one probably, as far as like what people focus on in sound, would be the own. And this one just shows up and does, it's like its own category of things. It's like, nah, I don't even fucking deal with those. It's, it's kind of, I wish this had a clip. I may have to 3D print a clip system for it. Because this would be amazing to clip onto my pants. And it's not a hard shape. It just doesn't come with the clip. Oh, it just said, oh, let's hold an LED here. It said power off. It didn't actually power off. The Bluetooth powered off. So you can be real fucking confused when you go from Bluetooth to plug-in and it's like, power off, yet it's still playing. It literally will do that while the song is playing and it's like, ah. You know what? Hold on. We're gonna, just, just, just for giggles and some shits. Not all the shits, just some shits. I just want to see what high gain can do to the Tungsten Mark 9.0 driver. It should do nothing. But there's there's some magic that just happens occasionally when when you you have a high gain output. I'm just gonna max this out without testing it. This is a good brave moment or stupid moment. I don't know, you're pretty stupid because the odds of it being loud after I max it out in high gain on tungsten 9.0 are like fucking zero. No. It's not. Okay. It is creating sound, however. Oh, and it's, it's it's like... I can hear distortions happening. It does not like to be there. Let's put it back into G or low or blue LED mode. Yeah, no. If I put any other headphone on this, it'd just explode. Here it goes. Yeah, no, okay. So what have we, what have we learned in this, this event? Oh, Zeus is a fucking weirdo. Oh, by the way, once it powers off, then you unplug it, then it's off. Then you'd have to washing machine. Make sure no one's using my bathroom upstairs. Reset button, by the way, in case you need to reset it. So this thing, being the biggest of the bunch, like physically the biggest, but also being the Bluetoothest of the bunch, because the Bluetooth ones tend to be a little bit larger. The only one that maintained the size of a dongle while adding Bluetooth ability was the, and I haven't mentioned this in a hot minute, the IFI Go Blue. Because that thing was like this size with a knob. So that had the best of all the worlds. It had it was this size, it had a knob, it had a 4.4. And it worked great. And it was Bluetooth. Or a dongle. But so people have asked me, like, Zios, doesn't that mean if you're reviewing dongles, shouldn't you talk about... Bluetooth devices like the BTR7. Couldn't I just take a B buy a BTR7 and plug it in and have it be a dongle? Yeah, absolutely. But now there's too many good choices that are... These are... I don't think there's a single thing on the desk here that isn't better than the BTR7. How's that? Just Zeo's timestamp that. You're thinking about... Oh, you're thinking about... It's It's been too long. Theo can't keep up. You need a BTR9 and it would have to be 
fucking madness. We would need to be fucking madness, battery death, to to actually compete with this mark. This is too crowded a space now. Everything here, and you know, this ideal fucking solution. Uh, if I could like, combine all the great things, I'd want a knob for volume. I'd want a window with pretty colored LEDs that I could either turn on and off. I want a fucking fiber optic or coax digital output through the thing. That would be amazing. Because I can't tell you, I could literally, I was at Capital Audio Fest, I'm like, if I bring, I brought this and I brought a 20 foot fiber optic cable, I could have plugged it into my fucking phone. Uh, and I could have plugged it in to any of the $50 trillion DAC amp speaker setups and be like, yeah, I've got a good digital source to you. Boom. And then the, the material feel of this, the material feel of this, with the window of this and the sound quality of this, but the the the, the quad, the, the this has more power, so I can't even like say the own has the power. Ugh, there's just too much good shit. The fact that they're all still here and not sold in the yard sale tells you something. Usually the yard sales for stuff that's like, by the way, if you're a Patreon supporter or a subscribe star supporter, once a month from the first to the tenth, or in this case from the first to the fucking fifteenth, I will um take things that I don't need and sell them. It's a don't need thing. I always need at least one or two of something that is like the best of the breed. And then like third, fourth down, like B tier, C tier stuff, just put in the yard sale, helps me keep the lights on in the house. But I haven't sold the dongle other than like the Fosse one, because the Fosse one was pure power, but not much else. But these other ones stayed, gonna stay, staying, staying, absolutely staying, love it. Probably th this will be the one I sell. If I'm gonna sell one, I'm selling the up far. What's the up for? For pooping, silly. Because that I don't need. But it's also the cheapest. It's a hundred bucks. So if you're gonna give me forty-five dollars on forty-five dollars and eighteen cents on Patreon, and it's gonna cost me, you know, eighteen dollars to ship it via US via UPS, you know, it's gonna give me thirty bucks. I'll, it'll buy me Chinese food one day, which is just Chinese food for myself because Chinese food is fucking expensive. So yeah, the dongle space is wild. And we're, we're, I could see it sort of morphing from straight dongs into hybrid dong slash Bluetooth. Because I think once you get the Bluetooth quality, you get the LDAC going on, they're all fucking LDAC. They're all like the best quality you can get right now. I see, if I cry to it, it's still good enough. Anyway, Patreon, subscribe, star, support this channel. Um, wallpaper is available in the Wallpaper Horde via Resilio Sync. You get every wallpaper I've ever used ever. Um, you just have to look how the program works. I have a video on my second channel explaining it. Like I was saying with Patreon and Subscribestar, you support this channel. You get to see these reviews early. Sometimes massively early, sometimes less massively early. I was going to attempt to get this video out before the 11.11 sale ended, but I got back from Capital and I just couldn't do it. So this will probably be sitting in the coffers for a week or two or three weeks. I currently have five or six videos that are not available publicly that are just waiting for their time to shine in the sun. I will be releasing like every third or fourth video. Will be public, but only to view through Patreon and Subscribestar. So if you wanna go check those out, um, click the links in the description, take you there, see which ones are public right now. Because I feel like it's unfair to keep things hidden for months. It's gonna be months at some point if I keep making videos the way I'm making them. So if you wanna see if there are videos that are not available live on YouTube yet, but available publicly on Patreon and Subscribestar, links. Um, five dollars a month that you see all those reviews early. Uh, participate in the yard sales, which I ship internationally for half shipping in Canada, United States for free. Um, sound demos, which I have to complete a bunch of headphone sound demos now. I've done a bunch of speaker ones. I got to edit those and put them up, and I got to do some headphone ones. Uh, don't forget to check out my in ear fetish channel, by the way, where all the IMs are. So if you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about with anything here, please. And then for ten dollars a month private behind the scenes telegram chat where you can ask me questions directly, uh, which gives you also access to the swap me channel for life where you can buy, sell and trade gear. So if you just have too much audio shit, just like I have my yard sales, you could have your own private yard sales and buy from other people's private yard sales. And it's a great little community. I've made a perfect sphere out of the blue tack that holds the battery into my, um, my GoPro. Thank you for stopping by. I'm sure this video is insanely long, but Coffee does that, and excitement about audio. I'm, I literally get to pull this fucking thing out, charge it, and then have eight straight hours of the best amplification. Well, you know what? Wrong. 
because it sounds different enough that I wouldn't assess a headphone on it or an IEM on it. Because as soon as I'm done with it on this and I plug it into a Burstyn deck or Questel 15 or Sabat, it's going to sound different, slightly different. Slightly not to my liking, slightly like it's more linear. And that's what I would go with, you know, own or even maybe keep the quest style for just like, I need flat. That's why there's so much shit. God. All right, moving on. Enjoy another video somewhere else.